everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, Dan, those wackadoos. We're gonna be, okay, so what we're going to be talking about is sociology uh -huh. uh, and the decline and or rise of, uh, of religion. Specifically Mormonism, yeah, but also other things. We're just gonna be sort of chatting about What what makes religions what's making religions lose their people? Where where are they going? What are we, where are the people going? Dan? How could they could, could can these religions hang on to these people? Oh, is it possible? I don't know Dan Who knows? Yeah, so, well, what do you got you got any stories? Yeah, for us I mean me? I ugh, God, I guess I'll just start with um some uh, a little problem over at the Vatican. Uh oh, a little uh, perhaps unethical action at the Vatican. Trouble in paradise. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, so I guess there's been some sense out there in the world that Pope Francis is a little, a little light on doctrine. I he's mean, touchy feely. Yeah, he's he is like, pretty touchy feely. He's he's all, he's more about the connections and this idea of being. The, the, a, a pastor, right? Of being yeah. a good shepherd. Uh, Where does the he people? get these ideas about like loving everybody and just yeah, and and not judging other people? Like where? Do, I mean, he judges. He's pretty good at judging other people, but he <laughs> talks about he, not judging. Yeah, other and people. he limits his judging to a respectable level. Yeah, right? yeah. You keep it down. You 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 you, you know you wash the feet of, of some of some control. prisoners or something. Yeah. You know? Well, well. Anywho, um, there was a. Uh, a letter that uh, came f came by way of uh, Pope Benedict, emeritus Pope Benedict. Oh, right. And in, and in we which, forget that the, that we have two popes. We're living in a two pope era. I know it's it's so confusing. Uh, in which he uh, praises uh, Francis for okay. his um, uh, theological and philosophical heft and blah oh. blah blah right? oh which uh, which is interesting because we always think of francis as kind of the polar opposite of of benedict right um and so there's a, a volume of books um about that are about the theological training of pope francis mm. and uh this letter is sort of intended to endorse uh these this series of books benedict blurbed Yes. Francis? <clears throat> Indeed. Okay. Um, but the actual letter is not being released. Only a photo of the letter. The <laughs> Vatican is releasing a photo of Benedict's praise, right? Okay. But the the very bottom, there's two, there's this big chunky paragraph. And then right at the bottom of it, there's the, the, of the, the page, there's two lines that have been blurred out. Oh. Apparently, these <laughs> are the lines... Uh, in which uh, Benedict starts to admit that he actually hasn't read the book. <laughs> <laughs> Nor has he had an opportunity to actually review the, review the, the theological training of Pope Francis. Okay. <laughs> well, that's delightful. Uh, you know... Frankly, I'll bet with blurbs for many books, mm -hmm. the person hasn't actually read the book. I'll right. bet that happens all the time. But when you're a pope, right? let me just throw this out there. Even I have expectations for a pope. Yeah. And yeah. one of those is, uh, don't just bald-faced lie. Well, he didn't. Oh? He's, in the first paragraph, oh. he praises this, his understanding of Francis's okay. everything, right? His his perspective, his from his perspective, right? Okay. And then he says, however, the the book in question, right? I haven't had a chance to read. Okay, so so the right? Vatican is taking the good parts and being like, oh, we can use that, right? We can totally use that. But but <laughs> but I don't understand why they just they just didn't type up the letter differently just type up that and, paragraph right, and put that out in front of the volume of books yeah. and take the picture that's instead, crazy instead they did they, they they didn't look where the page break came in right 
And then later on, somebody's like, oh, shit, we can't have we this need- in there. Like, it's all just totally hack. Who's good at Photoshop? There. Who's Father Jones? Jones, come over here and see if you can do something with this. No, blur, blur this out. C- commit an ethical violation. Right. Because also this letter is, is re- was released by Vatican Media. And so it, what a lot of people, especially journalists, are calling them out for is that this violates photojournalist uh, industry standards. Oh, that, that, that this is actually an ethics a, violation. An ethics violation. Oh, that, my that, that there's actually something seriously wrong with doctoring a photo that's being released for journalistic huh. standards or uh, me, uh, purposes. Huh. Isn't that interesting? There you go. They're, they're, oh. So they're not perfect over there at the Vatican, if you thought they were. Well, only two of them are. <laughs> there are only two infallible men there. Yeah. The rest of them, fallible. And yet they, they don't, yeah. It's so strange. They foul all the time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take us to, uh, well, to either rural central Illinois or Minnesota, depending on how you want to look at this story. Uh, because well, that's confusing. It was in so federal authorities have announced that they've charged three men from Illinois with uh, the with the bombing of a mosque in Minnesota. Okay, uh, this this okay. bombing happened I think last year, um, and basically these three men from a very rural uh, Clarence, Illinois which is a community of less than 100 residents, mm-hmm. fewer than 100 residents, That's, I should say. Thank you, Dan. I'm correct. Thank you very much. I'm now correcting the article that I'm the, sort of <laughs> glancing at. <laughs> this is a major beef of mine, so I'm glad you... Yes. It's 10 items or fewer. Or fewer. Uh, anyway, uh, this is about about 35 miles outside north of Champaign-Urbana Urbana in Illinois. Do you know that that that's a city, town, zone, area? Two cities? I don't know. It's Champaign hyphen Urbana. Anyway, oh, um, yeah, I'm confused. Everybody is everybody okay? Uh, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> the three men identified as Michael B. Harry, H A R I, Joe Morris, and Michael McWhorter, uh, are the ones who were arrested. Harry, who is 47 years old, and apparently lives or sometimes lives with his parents. I'm just going to point that out. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, and we know that because uh, a, a complaint came in to the authorities via a tip when a person sent the local sheriff photos of guns and bomb-making material inside his parents' house. Oh, boy. So, uh, oh, boy. Uh, so, anyway, they got they caught him. They got, They got these three guys. Uh, the two younger guys, now the two other guys, Morris and McWhorter, are 22 and 29, respectively. So, so they're, okay. they're a couple of kids that apparently were promised money. Like, apparently Morris said that Harry said that he would give them $18,000 to do this bombing. Oh, boy. So they went and they rented a truck, drove 500 miles to, uh, to Minnesota, where they, uh, where, where they broke a window at a mosque yeah. and threw in a pipe bomb that oh, they had boy. made. Okay. Uh, which started a fire, which was subsequently pretty immediately put out by the sprinkler system. So not didn't blow the place up. Right. Uh, but one of the guys stated that the whole point of this was to scare them out of the country. That's a quote. Oh my God. Uh, he wanted, they wanted the Muslims uh, to know that they are not welcome in these United States of America. And that's so just, that's, they did that. They that's al- not nice. They also attempted to bomb a, uh, planned parenthood. Um, because the, those, those folks aren't welcome in the country either. Yeah, I guess. Uh, oh. but that didn't work. They, they, they threw a bomb in and it was a dud, I guess. And that was the last one they had. Yeah. They only took two. Well, you don't want to take... I mean, you want to be prepared, but you don't want to be overloaded with bombs. Fair enough, but we are also talking about pipe bombs. I mean, how big... Like, these things... Yeah, well... They, they caused a fire that got put out by the fire suppression system. 
I mean, like, it's, like, it's like, nice. That doesn't seem like well, it's... and also they probably caused you know they probably caused yeah, some I'm sure it did physical damage, damage I'm around. Sure it did damage. Yeah, yeah, no, clearly. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Uh, but yeah, it is nice. It, what's nice about this? The reason that, uh, nice. The reason that I chose this story was because uh, because we actually somebody actually stated the motive. Uh, they were they were actually willing to say, "We're just trying to scare him out of the country," which is right. uh, that's great. Right. Good job, guys. Well done, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I actually have a story that that all segues nicely to. Okay. Um, this is the unfortunate announcement of a a, a new. Um, I don't want to call it a holiday in the UK. A new. Uh, well, let me just let me just say what it's being called. <laughs> okay. Um, a a, uh, a group sent out um, a letter announced around to a bunch of mosques and Muslims in the neighborhood um, uh, that, that they were declaring April 3rd punish a Muslim day. Oh, oh, okay. That took a turn you weren't expecting. It, it got dark pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not, this is not good stuff. Uh, so, uh, this went all over the, all over the country, uh, hit six different, uh, cities, uh, or at least that's where it's been reported, where people have received these kind of notes. Um, Birmingham, Cardiff, Leicester, uh, London, and Sheffield. Okay. Um, and they, uh, yeah, so the, the letter actually spells out the awards or the points that would be awarded for certain acts of violence. 25 points for pulling off a woman's headscarf. Oh, so, oh, okay. I didn't realize it was gamified. So this, this, yeah, yeah, is actually, yeah. this actually sounds great. I'm having fun with this now. Oh, now, yeah. now we're just now having someone, fun. Now someone can win. Yeah, yeah. What, who doesn't want to be a who's, winner? Who's going to win? <laughs> Punish a Muslim day. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah. Head, uh, headscarf is 25. Yeah, uh, it escalates quickly from there. Uh, 500 points for murdering a Muslim. <laughs> Damn. We went straight there, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and 1,000 for bombing a mosque. So are those guys... These guys... Th yeah, well, you guys, Dan. Did they even get points? I don't even know if they... Like, well, they it didn't, wasn't on the right day. They didn't wait for the day. Those guys were just dumb all around. Oh, my God. These guys... You know, it's it's the Americans that can't do it right. <laughs> These British. They, they organize. Have, they have it all figured out. Uh, yeah. Uh, disgusting... Uh, this disgusting game, whatever, um, and the announcement of it. Um, I mean, who knows? Anyway, it's I don't want to speculate it's on, probably just on whether this anybody is actually suggesting that anybody carry this out. It's being sent to members of the Muslim community, right. to Muslim-owned businesses, and to, I believe, some mosques. It's and probably the same three guys, just the British version. Yeah, it's yeah, It's just yeah, yeah. three dipshits in, in their basement. Right. Or and whatever you call that. They're just trying to scare people. In England. They're just trying to agitate. They're trying to scare um, them out of the country. Yeah. Um, you know, the Muslim community makes up, uh, what was it, 4 point something percent of uh, the um, population of the UK. Right. 4.4%. Um, um, that's about 2.7 million people. Uh, that's up from 1.55 million uh, in 2001. So the, yeah. the community has been growing and there's also this, uh, what's interesting is that there was a perception survey, uh, that went out in 2016, uh, that found that Britons overestimate the number of, mm. of Muslims in the country. Yeah. Uh, and, and that, that, that I think is so critical. I think it's the same thing, you know, that goes on in this country with a sense of, you know, about immigrant groups and everything. The, the 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 conservative types, they they they're taking. You know what? These Muslims are taking over. Yeah, they're uh, they they're gonna institute Sharia law. <laughs> it's always Sharia with these people. Yeah, it know? really is. And and it, yeah, and so like, it yeah. Sharia Punish law is literally Muslim. exactly the system of laws that these Christian people want. It's just named wrong. Yeah. It's exactly the system that they may, you know, with a few minor like dress code changes. <laughs> it's exactly the thing that they want. 
Like yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, truly disgusting and uh, <sighs> not the way to treat your neighbor, people. No, no. That's uh, Frank. And also, their point system is very badly calculated. Yeah, I feel like they, know, they, frankly, they really needed to do some more work on the points. Well, it is possible that the article failed to mention some of the other things. That yeah, could but be I, done, I, but you know? it, yeah, it just feels like they're way off. You know, if you've got twenty-five points, so that means you know, ten headscarves is the same as a murder. Come on. Mm, I see what you're saying. You you really got to you you got to weight the murder much heavier. That's at least a thousand. To, did I even do the math right on that? I have no, no idea. You, 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 you wait. What? I don't know. I'm just saying. I was just trying to. I'm just playing around. Twenty five into five hundred. Is that the math? Yeah, I don't know. Was it five hundred? I couldn't even remember how much it was. Yeah, it was five hundred. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Let's get hung up on it. Uh, I'm gonna move us along uh, to. Marion County, Oregon. Uh, oh yeah, where beautiful, where a cir- circuit court judge uh, by the name of Vance Day, mm. uh, which sounds made up, <laughs> has been not removed from the bench entirely. Which we may want to ask ourselves why not, but was suspended without pay for three years. What by the Oregon su- State Supreme Court. For what? What did he do? Well, for a series of uh, of thing, professional misconduct uh, oh. things, including but not limited to, and I'll get to the one that we will focus on. But um, he uh, he, <laughs> some of these are fun. It was a, I think there were six different allegations or eight that he was accused of, and and six that he was convicted of. Mm-hmm. Uh, he apparently. He, he, they focused a lot on the fact that he wrongfully allowed a felon to handle a, a, a firearm. It was somebody, I, I think it was somebody who was working for him or whatever, but he, he kept like having him go get his gun or whatever, which was, which is against the law. Uh, okay. Uh, there, there was a t- apparently an incident where he shoved his business card, his judge business card okay. r- into the face of the, so- his son's soccer referee to uh to convince him that he was wrong about a call in the game I guess <laughs> he's like you're a ter- you're terrible at judging things do you, do you I know- am actually a real judge do you know who you're talking to sir <laughs> you- that was not offsides <laughs> uh he had a, he included in his in part of as part of his quote hall of heroes artwork display that he put up in the county courthouse uh, a portrait of Adolf Hitler which apparently there's oh. some sort of explanation for, but I'm not really interested in. Uh, yeah, but, there is, there is no ex- explanation for that. Yeah, there's no, nothing why, valid. Why would you hang Adolf Hitler's picture in the Hall of Heroes in a courtroom? The Hall of Heroes in the Hall of Heroes. Uh, yeah, even if yeah, even if he like had a little plaque that talked about why he was a bad hero instead of a good hero. I don't I don't know how you do it. A bad hero. Yeah, not great. Not great. Uh, but the one that I wanted to talk about uh, is the fact that he would re- he refused to marry same-sex couples. Oh. He was sneaky about it. Okay. Uh, he's a devout Christian. Mm. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Oh, all this is making a little more sense now. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, he, uh, so he, he would have his, st- he instructed his staff, apparently, that when uh, when straight couples would come and or w- would ask for an appointment, you know, for him to come and marry mm-hmm. them, uh, they would be given a time when he was af- available. When gay couples would ask, I'm sorry, he's not free. Mm. And not only that, but he apparently instructed his his people to cover it up, to make mm. sure that that it didn't get out that he wasn't doing that he wasn't doing this. Ew, he's awful. He's gross. He knows. He knew he was being bad. Yeah. Yeah. He he fully knew that this was not acceptable behavior for a judge, and he did it anyway. Although- I hate him. Considering the other things, he doesn't seem particularly interested in what's what's good (laughs) or bad for a judge to do. Like- 
or just dignified for a judge to do. Right. Or that's or is like remotely intelligent for a judge to do. <sighs> oh my god. Yeah. I I wouldn't mind being a judge, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty judgy. Yeah, right. Like I think I think I could do a good job of it. I could take one of those, you know, uh what do they call it? The justice court type uh, job. There you go. Right. You know, there's no qualifications required for that job. Literally. Uh, literally. I'm not making that up. <laughs> this is not just some dumb thing I'm saying. The Salt Lake City Justice Court, it pretty much anybody can be appointed to it. Well, there you I and... mean, looking at looking at what our president is currently doing to the federal judgeships. <laughs> Anybody can be a judge. You and can I, just, uh, you just got to convince the right person yeah. and you get to be a judge. I would just absolutely love it. <laughs> People come into my court, you know, sometimes I get all judge Judy on them. So other times I'm like, I'll say this. If, if my 1980s <laughs> television viewing uh, tells me anything, it's that I am qualified to be a night court judge. <laughs> A little bit of a uh, little bit of magic. A little, little bit of sleight little, of hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, uh, if I recall, listening to some uh, some Perry Como. No, no, no. It was uh, it was what's his name? The Velvet Fog. What is his name? Mel Torme. Mel Torme. <laughs> How do we right. both know this show so well? Because <laughs> I watched every fucking episode. Very embarrassing. How well we both know this show, but we do. Yeah. I don't really remember a lot of in, like plot lines. No, no. I remember the characters really well. I remember, I remember a few Bull I, and uh huh. Uh, the guy that played Bull was from Salt Lake. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's so much fun. <laughs> oh, let's do another. Will you, will you please move us on to another story? Sure. <laughs> So, Dan, you know this whole internet thing? Yes. Just I've keep, heard of it. keeps plugging away. Um, <laughs> I just, think it's just a it's fad. It's still there. It'll wear off eventually. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm tired of most of it. Yeah. Uh, but there's some new parts of it that have been declared. Oh. Uh, Can through, you just declare through, parts of things? Through the creation of some new generic top level domain names oh okay this would so this, this would be like dot com like dot com or dot org dot these net are, these are the dot the gov dot blank behind your url dot co dot uk right right yeah because they needed right? an extra dot in the middle of theirs <laughs> what's up with you limeys get your act together will you uh well anyway uh one of the new ones there, there's actually a ton of new ones that have come out um and I, I really didn't bother to look up um, any of them. <laughs> but there, one of them is dot .bible. Oh, great. And I'm, I'm going to launch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me a dot .bible right. address. Yeah. The control of which was purchased. This is all very fascinating. Uh, by the American Bible Society. Oh, I guess I'm not going to get one then. Which as part of their uh, application. Uh-huh. They, uh, like when they you pledged okay. to provide wide access to, quote, all qualified parties interested in Bible issues. Okay. Right? Uh, so, but uh, after they got the da domain name, however, uh, the American Bible Society uh, barred publication of material it uh, defined as, quote, antithetical to New Testament principles or that promoted a secular worldview, or oh. a non-Christian religion or set of religious beliefs. And in addition to that, it's being ruled by a um, panel of, pro of uh, traditional Protestants, uh, or, or people who affirm traditional Protestant definitions of the Bible. Uh, so it's, it's this... It's become this very exclusionary thing. They want to control the Bible on the so, internet. So an atheist biblical scholar would, would probably, probably not, not be able to get mass or pass muster. Would no. probably not be able to get a dot Bible address. Uh, it was actually uh, for a minute. There was actually a question whether uh, any um, any Jewish folk or catholics even uh <laughs> would, would would get a space on dot bible oh wow well go get your own dot torah if you want to if you want a url <laughs> what about the catholics though dot dot bible dot catholic bible dot catholic bible dot heathen bible 
dot whore of Babylon Bible. Right. Um, no. So uh, apparently, uh, thanks to the protests of a lot of these different groups, uh, there has been some um, reform of that initial uh, stance. Mm hmm. And uh, and now uh, they're they're they've sort of extended a an olive branch of sorts to uh, Judaism. That's nice. Uh, by uh, they've prohibited content that communicates disrespect for the Jewish faith. Um, nice. Oh. well done, <laughs> well done. And uh, yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, I guess my dot Bible address is a pipe dream that I will never be able to. Yeah, but and, and here's the thing, though, by this one really specific group controlling dot Bible, mm -hmm. the names of these sites that will be on dot Bible are are because this is a whole new. All these words yeah. are now available, right? Yeah. Because you can now use any old word that you couldn't get for like a dot .com. Right. You could right? There's no way you can get like a four letter actual word on dot .com. It's already right. it's been bought. It's all been purchased it, up. Right. Right. And so so the thing about dot .bible is that they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to have short names, concise, very yeah. specific words, and it's going to be very these are going to be the when you search on the internet these are going to be the things that are coming up most likely. Right. Right. At the top of your search results. Right. Are going to be the things that are on dot Bible. If you're searching for Bible related stuff. So these people actually have uh, a chance to really kind of control sort of perception of the Bible on the internet. Huh. And in addition to that, um, exclude things that they don't like. Right. Yeah. So much for net neutrality. <laughs> There goes my. That's a different issue. There goes my biblical porn idea. <laughs> well, why is there not like dot no god or dot atheist right. or dot uh, humanist? Somebody work some maybe there so, is. some know. lawyer that's willing to do pro bono help me sue them to, so that I can get dot triple x dot bible, and we'll 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 start a we'll start we'll start a porn. It's all Biblical porn, or yeah. porn based oh, on biblical yeah. stories. Oh yeah, Bathsheba is going to be super hot. Well, that was a given, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, this week, sadly, we said goodbye to one Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Uh, sent him off into the great nothing. Uh, yeah. Afterward, and he's I, in heaven now. He is in heaven. I. It the it's amazing the number of like, of like you know sort of cartoons that I saw mm -hmm. or whatever memes and stuff that had him in an afterlife. Yeah, meeting you know like like literally there was one thing. What was the one? It was uh somebody talk because it was also um, Einstein's birthday, mm. and somebody mm. somebody's yeah, tapping so. Einstein on the back. I think I think it was. Oh, I think it was like Steve Jobs inexplicably tapping Einstein on the back and saying, look who's here. And I was like, okay, so three atheists in an afterlife. Great. They could, yeah. Surprise, I guess, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. No, that was Kurt Vonnegut's thing. He said that the funniest thing anybody could say about him after, after he died was, he's in heaven now. Right. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it... RNS, the Religion News Service, did did a really interesting little article outlining uh, his public so, sort of sort of a, a chronological exploration into his public view of religion, which oh, okay. which evolved over time. Ah, so I thought I'd I thought I'd favor us all with that. Oh, uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, by the way, anybody who doesn't know, he was a theoretical physicist. He was uh, a, a, an insanely influential uh, astrophysicist, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, sure. Yeah. Sounds, sounds right. That sounds about right. Um, Seems to be the kind of things he concerned himself with. Yeah. Um, and, and, and had a, a beautiful knack for actually relaying the science to people who didn't have his brain. Cause, right. Yeah. Because his brain was the one that was doing all the the heavy lifting but he but he yeah. had a good way of uh of of relaying it to the people. Yeah. Uh so uh now I before I dive into this I will say that not everybody was uh was kind about his his death. Um oh. there were a lot of 
evangelical Christians <laughs> who were super cunty about it. Uh, if I'm if I'm gonna be honest with you, including people on my own, in my own uh, like Facebook world, no, which my my Facebook world is fairly have fairly well, like I have crafted it to the point where like I don't have people on there that right, and it's not like I'm not even like an, a you know a, a big blocker of people or whatever, right? I just right. have good friends and you know it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, you've you've tended that garden well. I have. Uh, but yeah, I had one person who wrote, quote, I could not care less about Stephen Hawking. There, I said it. Which to me just sound like, the first of all, she's, she's one of these evangelists. She is the, the most uh, conservative Christian I know. I have other conservative Christian friends. She's the one that like is like- Yeah, she sounds like the real deal. Trump supporter and whatever. Yeah, okay. But it's so funny because to me that just, that sentiment, just I could not care less, uh, there I said it, sounds like I'm I, a, I don't like science. It's just, it's just like, it's just, it, I prefer my own ignorance yeah, or whatever. She, she also cared enough to type it. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then other people, then uh, someone wrote on that thread, I'm just going to read this quote because it kind of- typifies what's what is happening out there and some people were much more harsh than this Uh, this person said i care that others know the real truth and his denial of god that jaded every single teaching and understanding he he propagated across the globe in his lifetime and that god so desired to see corrections made that he sent thousands of believers to his side or to contact him to speak truth to pray for this man's salvation and and war over his soul. God gave him every chance to acknowledge him, but he couldn't, but he, uh, because he could have redeemed so much armed with the real facts. That is the worst tragedy of all. (laughs) Isn't that, that's uh, just a tragedy. It really is. Wow. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. He, uh, he is. So anyway, uh, I, I actually didn't even understand what she was saying apparently yeah, yeah <laughs> I think it it's took pretty me nonsensical a, yeah it, it it makes no sense other than uh he did damage to the world by saying God. some of the things that i'm about to say that he said yeah okay let's hear it let's hear um it. so horrible things i'm sure yes just 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 awful for um but let's rec- recall that this that there's this was sort of a a, a process so in 2010 uh, he was talking to Diane Sawyer, and he said, quote, what, what could define God is thinking of God as the embodiment of the laws of nature. However, that is not what most, most people would think, mm. uh, would think of as God. They made up a human being, a human-like being, with whom one can have a personal relationship. When you look at the vast size of the universe and how insignificant an accidental human life is in it, that seems most impossible. Hmm. So he, you know, he's talking about God, but he's talking about it in terms of uh, the laws of nature are his God. Right. As Shakespeare might have put it, thou nature art my goddess. Oh, beautiful. Actually, he did put it that way. Oh, wow. Uh, then in his book, A Brief History of Time, oh, yeah. uh, this, this goes back to uh, 1988. This was his big, his b- sort of bestseller. Uh, he wrote, the whole history of science has been a, the gradual realization that events do not happen in an arbitrary manner, but they reflect a certain underlying order, which may or may not be divinely inspired. So 88, that sounds pretty, pretty gaudy. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty believery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, later in the book, he says it would be the ultimate ultimate triumph of human reason, for then we should know the mind of God. When he was talking for the quest for a unifying theory of the universe. Mm, okay. Um. Uh. So you know that seemed to indicate some religious stuff there. Maybe. Yeah. Uh. In two thousand seven, the laws may have been declared decreed by God. But God does not intervene to break the laws, he, oh. he said to Reuters. Oh, interesting. So that's, this seems a little something. Okay. Uh, so God tied his own hands, can't untie them. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. or he just is busy. <laughs> he'll get he'll get around. 
I mean, he used to break his own his own natural laws all oh, the time. No, you know, he'd man. he'd part a sea, or he'd you know flood the whole world or no, something. He he'd, do that. he'd break his laws all the time. Now he doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, back to 2010 when he said, uh, "Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason there is something rather than nothing. Uh, why the universe exists? Why we exist?" It is not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. Wow. So, suddenly the universe can create itself. <sighs> oh, no. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Rush Dan, Limbaugh what is he saying? We'll have things to say about that. Well, what is he saying, Dan? It, it, it seems to be that he's letting go of this God thing. No. Uh, within a year from that, he said in a Discovery Channel documentary, we are each free to believe what we want, and it is my view that the simplest explanation is there is no God. <gasps> no one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. Wow. Skun dun dun. <sighs> and then finally, in a in a interview with the Spanish newspaper El Mundo. Oh yeah. The world. That's the, yeah. He said, or what? yeah. He, and this is a rela related to an earlier quote. He's, what I meant by we would know the mind of God is we would know everything that God would know if there were a God, which there isn't. I'm an atheist. That's really clear. Yeah. yeah. He, he, it became n no uncertain terms. At first it started out like, okay, you're kind of having fun with words there. And right. it's like, oh, oh no, you're, you're oh, just saying it. You're just saying it out loud now. Okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Anyway, uh, yeah, Stephen, seventy six, right? Uh, the age of him? Yeah, yeah, he, he was, he was seventy six years old. Uh, nice. Lived a lived a pretty long life, uh, considering how how debilitating that Lou Gehrig's disease can be. Yeah, no kidding. So he did pretty well. Yeah, and huh. he gave the world a better understanding of the universe. Yeah, of the big Big Bang. Yeah, he basically gave us Eddie Redmayne. Like the, that guy didn't really exist before he played him on the movie, so we're he gave us a lot. There you go, yeah. <laughs> amazing. You didn't see that movie? I did not. The I don't, I theory don't. of Everything is that what it was called? The movie about Stephen Hawking? I don't. I don't. I don't anyway, it was delightful. Eddie Redmayne's a a a, a treasure. Oh, indeed, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> well, oh, there wonderful. you go. Oh, Dan. Well, if you guys have anything you'd like to say to us, please uh, write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and click that like button. And while you're on Facebook, you can search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, but... We let people in. Yeah, that's what we do. That, so that more all you, people can all join. you have to is, you just say Frank and Dan sent me, and you're you're gold. Wow. Dan. Yes, sir. Uh. uh you, do you? What do you think America smells like? <laughs> smell. If you had to describe America, America. And, and, and the smell, what what is the uh the America? It's I mean, America. My America smells like freedom. Uh. Smells like diesel fuel, and it smells like uh, candy corn, cotton candy, and uh, probably a little, just a vague hint of vomit and urine. Just like, just like a little baby hint of that, cause, cause, yeah, cause we got New York in it. Bile, you know. yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Well, uh, we have some uh, audio here from Rick Wiles, and what a handsome gentleman he is. You know, uh, I, I don't know if you've, uh, if you guys, he's a have snappy ever... dresser. <laughs> he looks like every everybody's great uncle that you def desperately don't want to have to see. All right, let's just hear what he has to say. Okay. I went to the Lord this afternoon, and I said, God, what do I say? What do I say on television? What is happening? 
And this is the scripture he gave me. It's Ezekiel 24, verses 13 and 14. This is God speaking to Israel. On account of your unclean lewdness, because I would have cleansed you, and you were not cleansed from your uncleanness, you shall not be cleansed anymore until I have satisfied my fury upon you. I am the Lord. I have spoken. It shall come to pass. I will do it. I will not go back. I will not spare. I will not relent according to your ways and your deeds. You will be judged, declares the Lord God. God was saying to Israel, you're lewd, you're dirty, you're filthy. I've, I've offered to clean you up, to wash away your sins, but you won't do it. Right. You don't want to be clean, so therefore I'm going to clean you with judgment. Yes. My friend, that's the word the Lord gave me to speak right now to the American people. America, you're lewd. You're filthy in the eyes of the Lord. You think you're great and mighty, but you're lewd. You're filthy. You're dirty. Your sins stink to heaven. America smells like putrid vomit in the nostrils of the Lord right now. So you better be careful about saying, oh, we're going to have a war. We're going to beat Russia. You better be very careful because the Lord may be on Russia's side in this war. <laughs> They're acting more Christian than us. And this nation has embraced homosexuality, lewdness, pornography, every vile thing, paganism, the gods of the East. We've embraced it in this country, and the church just accommodates it. Yes. Just looks the other way. We're lewd. You're lewd. You're no. You're lewd. No. You're lewd. Filthy. We're filthy, stinky, lewd people. Is what we are. Uh, I'm not lewd. <laughs> you're <laughs> lewd. You're probably not lewd. I'm a little lewd. I kind of like it. Yeah. I, I. Yeah. I'm. I'm sure you are, Dan. Um. I dig it. <laughs> I like well, I like lewdness. I, you know, I he uh I I wouldn't I he doesn't pass my test of would I want to live next door to him? No. No he's that guy. A, he's he's a wretched na next door neighbor. Oh I that you. Oh that guy. You know what he is? He calls the cops on you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like you know, it's nine thirty at night, and you've got uh, you've got music playing in your backyard. They're being lewd. <laughs> please, I think please. it's lewdness. <laughs> please, <laughs> what is it? What is the nature of the emergency? They're being lewd. Lewdness. You know, they're I'm not being, sure that's a crime in and of itself. They're they're not being good like the Russians. Yeah. We, what the fuck? We need more. We they're more Christian. Well. I mean, the kind of Christians he likes. I yeah, suppose. I mean, what they are is more authoritarian. The way he likes it, and more gay hating. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're great at that. They they despise gay people. What else? Uh, that's pretty good. About all I know, I don't about know. Russia. Actually, I, I have heard that in Russia they have. Uh, you can get a prostitute to pee on a bed for virtually for probably cheap. Oh, that's interesting. Where did yeah. you hear that? Oh, our president did that. that sounds kind of lewd. <laughs> ah, Americans again, <laughs> so lewd. <sighs> All right. Oh, okay, uh, well, on. we had some people write into us. Uh, I actually forgot to do the emails last week, so I'm I doing. I can't believe you, Dan. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and you remembered so well. Uh, we both forgot, is what I'm pointing out <laughs> about the emails. How dare you? How dare I? Here we go. Zach wrote into us. Hey. Long time listener here. Love the show. You helped me through my deconversion from the first 23 heavily evangelical years of my life. Well, mm. congratulations. Yeah. Um, I'm writing seeking some clarity on something that was said in episode 326. At one point, the desire was expressed to see animals being, ma being more humanely slaughtered. Mm. Uh, it's, it simply struck me as odd that you would use the word slaughter and humane together in that way. 
It wasn't quite mentioned in passing. Uh, it was a point being made. Given that the majority of the world's leading health organizations have declared vegetarian and vegan diets healthy for humans at all stages of life, could you perhaps talk out loud about or reconcile the idea of humane slaughter? Uh, well, I sort of fall into the Temple Grandin category of like how to treat animals. Yeah. And how to appreciate animals. Yeah, know? I mean, I think humane slaughter is... Uh, I mean, for someone who's a vegan who who believes that like the killing of animals for human food consumption or use is is immoral, I, mm -hmm. th these arguments aren't going to mean anything. Right. But the fact is that there are like way meaner ways to slaughter an animal, including uh, the halal and and uh, what's well, the, the what's the Jewish one? Uh, Kosher. Kosher ways, yeah. which involve like just slitting their throats right. and letting them bleed out. Right. Whereas, you know, there are ways of like making sure that the animal doesn't sense that there are other animals that are going through pain exactly. so that they're not afraid. And then a very quick way of, of making sure that they don't feel pain, that it just happens instantly they and then they're dead. Die virtually instantly. Yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, that, Instant that's... death doesn't sound awful right and with no and as long as there's no fear leading up to it oh. uh you know that's that's as humane as slaughter gets yeah. whether Sla you, whether you disagree oh. that that's okay right. uh that's that's what we're talking about yeah and if you don't know the work of temple grandin you should look her up yeah she's great uh, as played redesigned yeah as played on the made for tv movie by uh what's her name claire danes claire danes yeah <laughs> she does a really nice job um but yeah the, the she came up with uh a lot of more humane and ethical ways to treat and handle animals. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's great. Uh, so Tristan wrote into us, what is your opinion? Uh, we, we talked, you'll recall about Iceland. Both of these kind of sprang from that conversation, Iceland and their, uh, their banning of circumcision. Yeah. Uh, which you and I applauded. Tristan wrote in and said, what is your opinion about uh, of medical circumcision? I only ever hear it from uh, hear about it from a religious point of view and think that uh, the priestly fellating of infants is disturbing, but circumcision by a medical professional doesn't bother me. I may be biased because I was circumcised at the hospital as an infant. Uh, so I think I, and I think our, our stance on this has been uh pretty clear it's just it it's largely about the fact that you're mutilating a human body of someone who's too young to actually consent give permission for the yeah the procedure yeah you're no. literally cutting off a part of someone's body right who w unnecessarily completely needlessly and they can't actually give their uh permission for you to do so uh, so it doesn't matter whether it's done medically or it's done, you know, in someone's house by a moil, the, right. the ethical problems remain. Right. But if an adult decides that they want their penis to be circumcised, okay. uh, he can go in and yeah, I suppose he could have it done by a moil that's also going to fillet him if he wanted to. If he wants to. Yeah. And hey, he can even grant the consent for the fellatio. So yeah, all of it. Like it's all good. As long as it's an adult. As long as it's an adult. It's weird. That would be a very strange thing, but, you know, there you go. Uh, Jason also <laughs> wrote in to us, uh, I thought it'd be cool to share this bit of knowledge I gathered while I, was, uh, while I was getting my bachelor's in religious studies. In episode 322, you talked about the doctrine of immaculate conception. You had said that this was thought of by someone in the 800s, However, this doctrine was not universally held by the Catholic Church until Pope Pius IX enacted it in 1854. 1854. Uh, what? Um, oh, come on. Even though versions of it were already in belief amongst its people, it is theorized Ooh. by John Shelby Spong, and I think this is fascinating, that the scientific discovery of the mammalian ovum in 1827 pushed a need for this dramatic and odd change in doctrine oh. until that point it could only be observed that a woman was the vessel for the child created by the man's seed yeah since it was one's since it was one's lineage that passed on the curse for of original sin according to saint o to augustine 
Uh, Jesus was conceived without original sin as his only lineage was his father, God. Hmm. When the egg was discovered, this left Jesus open to, quote, infection from his by his mother's newly discovered role in conception, hmm. necessitating that the church cover a gap with the new doctrine. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Like, and it makes sense. People yeah. just didn't know that the woman actually played a part other than just carrying. Being the soil. Yeah. That the seed was planted in. Right. Interesting. And then once they found out, oh shit, like half of it's her. Right. How are we going to solve that problem? Yeah. All right. How do we solve a problem like Maria? Yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks, Jason. That's uh, amazing. What a neat little bit of trivia. Indeed. Uh, we have some folks to thank. We have uh, new patrons, Dan. Okay. On Patreon. Hooray. Um, so I'd like to thank the following two listeners. Okay. For becoming faithful listeners. Um, Mitten and Wade. <laughs> okay. And uh, and then I need to think. That's not Mitten's Romney, is it? Because Mitten. Okay. There's just one. Well, if we get if the if another Mitten comes on, we'll know that we that <laughs> that the future senator from, sure. from yeah. Utah is going. To- um, and then uh, we have two new beatified listeners. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Dang and Brittany. Neat. So I need to thank both of them as well. Thank you so much. Blessings on you, people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they these are these are folks who have have gone to our website, thinkgodimatheist.com. Yes. And click on the support tab. Yeah. And then they went to Patreon, and they selected the level at which they wanted to to support the show. You're right. They become part of that community. Yeah. They uh, and in return, there's bonus content that's available. Yeah. Uh, based on the level at which one decides to uh, to join up, and that yeah. level uh, has we're we're adjusting we're some making of the some adjusting yeah. uh, some adjustments. So now you can get the all of our you can get our bonus content, which is weekly now. The, well, the specific bonus content being uh, the Frank and Dan Diaries. That's right. Uh, that was at the three dollar level, and that's now going to be dropped down to the two dollar level. Boom, um, baby. And uh, but any buddy who shows up on Patreon and becomes a patron gets free a uh, commercial free access. That's right. Or they get access to a f- commercial free version of the show. That's right. They don't have to listen to any of the ads. None of the ads. So there you go. Which is that's uh, a nice little benefit right there. So yeah, go ahead and uh, join them if you'd like. And of course, we always have to thank our our top, top donor. Yeah. Number who one continues to reign supreme, our Lord and Savior, Angela. <laughs> Blessed be she uh, among all of y'all. All right. Name of the Father and the people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, Frank. Dan, uh, I want to talk about a thing. I found a, a, an interesting column written by one Jana Reese, who is a mm-hmm. a Mormon, uh, uh, and she writes a column on RNS, on the Religion News Service, yeah. um, about Mormonism called Flunking Sainthood. Yeah, she's an, she has a very interesting voice. She does. Uh, as she's, a writer about Mormonism from within Mormonism. And she's quite liberal uh-huh. and she's she's uh you know, she and she's also like scientifically minded. So uh-huh. she has done apparently a huge series of studies about okay. uh Mormonis, Mormons and uh sort of opinion polls and a whole bunch of studies sociological s- studies oh really um oh, which is kind of studies which she has not released because she's gonna she's publishing them in a book oh uh, she's got a little game yeah but she has but she's released certain things she's talked about she's, certain she's things doing right she's she's teasing us yeah Dan. she is she's a, yeah she's uh she's, she's wetting our whistles <laughs> <laughs> well my whistle feels wet anywho um so she recently went on a podcast uh, put out by the Salt Lake Tribune in which she talked about some of the, some of her, some of the findings and stuff, mm-hmm. and she talked about the fact that millennials 
in Mormonism, as with almost all of American religions, mm -hmm. uh, are dropping like flies, meaning, yeah. meaning they're leaving the religion a lot. That doesn't mean they're dying. They're just <laughs> leaving the religion. Uh, in larger numbers than previous generations. Huh. Um, and Almost for, universal, right? Like 98% of millennials are just like... <laughs> Uh, gone. Done not, with the religion, right? Not quite that. Um, <laughs> but for instance, uh, in uh, the number of Americans ages, nine, ages 18 to 29 who have no religious affiliation, in 86, that number was 10%. Okay. In 2016, what do you think that number is? 20%. 39%. Shut up. 39% of 18 what? to 29-year-olds. Uh, according to the PRRL, which what? I don't know what that is. Uh, anyway, uh, this, so, so there's, so everybody's asking the question, what's happening? How do we keep these people? You know, I, what's going on? How do you get them back is the better question. Well, you've lost those people. You've lost them. Wow. Uh, In that kind of number as well, like, it feels like there'd be a lot of like social, like, these are kids who, if they're part of that 39%, their, their whole social network is probably filled with mostly people who think the same way. Yeah. Who have, who are, who are unaffiliated or who are atheist or whatever. Right. right? It's a really good, I mean, because I mean, you, you, you kind of have to have a large enough of a group in order to, to withstand the pressures from the outside. And this is, I mean, that's an unbelievable number. Right. And I think part of it, so, so, you know, somebody wrote into her, you know, she wrote, uh, Jana Reese wrote this, uh, column, this, the, uh, blog post about this guy that wrote into her after she appeared on this podcast and, right. he, and he was a baby boomer who had some, who has millennial, you know, adult millennial children. And he was saying, because her prescription for what the Mormon church needed to do to retain more of the young people mm. was things like you know stop shitting on gay folk right because the young people all have gay friends right and they're all they all realize that these gay friends are not evil people right so stop shitting on the gay folk stop uh stop being you know so just so awful to everybody right uh and this guy wrote in and said hold the phone there because traditionally, because historically, it's the religions that have the tightest control that are the meanest, that are the, the you know, the authoritarian, you know, baseball bat wielding, do, you know, law, <clears throat> letter of the law uh, religions, the really conservative ones are the ones that are either growing or at least retaining their people. Hmm. And to some extent, that seems to be true. It rings true. Uh the liberal, the more liberal churches seem to lose people, hemorrhage people pretty quick. Well, because I mean, because mainly the thing that religion does when religion is operating, you know, with all pistons firing, right? Hmm. It's really doing a good, like it's controlling your life. It's right. and, it, and it's making you feel, feel guilt and hopefully shame. Right. Right. Hopefully by their point, from their point of view. <laughs> right. For normal human urges and normal human stuff that right. human beings just do. When right? you can weaponize humanity against itself. Right. You have control. So I want it almost like, but was she, but the, so she, does she have a response to that? Like, Well, what's interesting is that it doesn't seem to be applying so much anymore. These old ways of thinking. Uh, so, so, so it's like. Something has turned. Yeah. She she mentioned the internet, Dan. It's the internet. It kind of is the internet. <laughs> Not just the internet, mind you. Right. Uh, but but like the fact that you have access to so much information right. that so many people are allowed to speak. Right. And can actually like get their voices heard. Right. Us for right. one thing. Yeah. Like the fact that this is happening, that we have a that there's a podcast and two guys who don't believe in God. Right. Are able to just put their voices out into the world and other people can listen like that is having a huge impact. Yeah. And it means that. And also what it's done is, you know, people 
once we sort of get to know people, mm-hmm. you know, when, it's like what happened with, with gay folk. Mm-hmm. Society started to meet gay people. Yeah. Gay people started to say, I'm gay. Right. And then everybody was like, oh, well, you're not bad. You're just, right. you're just a person. Right. Well, I think space is opening up in society. It, you know, it used to be in, you know, in the, in the America that my grandfather grew up in, not being affiliated with a church was horrific. Yeah. You would, yeah, I mean, socially you would be an absolute pariah. Yeah. Even, you know, so there were plenty of people who didn't believe they just went to church because they had no other choice. They wanted really. friends. They wanted. Yeah. They didn't want people egging their house or whatever. But uh-huh. now, you know, we're the society's views are. You know, we still have plenty of people yelling about how bad we atheists are. Right. But I think societal views are changing about. You know, the guy down the street is an atheist and he's fine. Right. So we can live in harmony with atheists or whatever. Right. And uh, yeah, and other than the evangelical, you know, the pastors who are screaming about it, it's, uh, nobody really is caring as much anymore. Yeah. So I think once space is created so that like, you're not, you know, you're not going to be like the worst person in the world. If you leave your religion shit. Yeah. A lot of people are going to leave their religion. Yeah. Their religion's ridiculous. So Boy, it really, it really though speaks to how effective the control mechanisms were. Yeah. That, I mean, it had such a grip and, and and stranglehold on so many people. Like, think about all the people who who just suffered through church silently. Yeah, yeah. Just oh uh, my you God. just you just sort of hung in there. Uh, the, there's a soci- sociologist named Darren Shurkat, uh, which is that's totally made up. Which is totally made up. But yeah, uh, Reese. Uh, quotes Darren Shurkat saying uh, he, who who apparently calls the strict church church theory uh the supply side thesis of religion <laughs> okay <laughs> which i think is funny yeah um but contrast that with what with what he calls secularization as a theory um which uh argue secularization theories argue that as the united states becomes more secular Religious attachments will become less important. Oh, really? Wow, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> but secular, uh, but uh, proponents of secularization expect to find that non uh, that uh, non affiliation is increasing. Um, it is interesting. I feel like uh, I feel like the the old guard, the old uh, models of what kept people in church and what didn't keep people in church or whatever Uh are changing dramatically. None of them apply anymore because it's just a different world. Wow. And it's because of the atheist podcasters. Oh, thank God (laughs) for us. Thank God for us. (laughs) (laughs) We're saving the world. (laughs) Oh, Uh. you know, great. Good. I'm happy. Finally. Well, finally, but as long as it holds, but as we've talked about many times before it, it's just so much fun to watch as these religions try and grapple with this problem. Yeah. Because they can take one of two paths. They can take the clamp down hardcore, hard line, blah, blah, blah path. And, Mm -hmm. uh, and just alienate and just alienate everyone and seem like, complete assholes but they'll Which but there will be there will actually I be a like group that of, approach there will actually I think they like, should keep that up i mean that's kind of the trump voter approach right yeah. like the single best predictor of who would vote for trump was someone who believed in authoritarianism you know right. what i mean so the trump voter approach is one approach and it'll work for a percentage of people yeah and then there's the liberalization approach which then maybe they keep some people who would have left if they had hated gays because now they they love gays now right but then a lot of people just be, you know, as it gets more and more liberal and it's more and more touchy feely and it's like less about the rules, a lot of people don't need it. Right. You know, they don't feel the need to be there. It, right. It's not offering them anything. So then they just sort well, of yeah. meander away. They're no longer selling, you know, shame and guilt. Right. You know. So what do you have holding me there? Yeah. 
Yep. Huh. I'm not. Huh. I, you know, I'm not coming for the coffee. Because <laughs> I can. I can, I can brew my own coffee. Yeah. And better than theirs. Anyway, uh, all interesting stuff. If you guys have any sociological grand theories on religion and the retention or loss of uh, religious adherence, I would love to hear your, your thoughts. Right into us. Yeah. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call us. Yeah. Maybe. Please. Call me, maybe. <laughs> 424 666 8442. Yeah, that number. gets your voice on the thing. Uh, yeah. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist, and uh, click that like button. And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Request to join. It's a closed group, but we'll let you in. Yes, indeed. Hey, uh, speaking of Facebook, thanks so much to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on the Facebook page, and thanks to Sarah, Danny, and Amy for their hard work as moderators in that Members Only Lounge. And as always, a big special thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club mm -hmm. and Gordon Johnston for the use of their music. Yes, indeed. Uh, and thanks again to our patrons who uh, sustain this program and keep us going. We, uh, we care so much about all of you, and we care about you. Thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. Bye-bye.